first of all, I, I really appreciate everybody coming on the call. Uh, I'm not surprised because I know how invested you are in these issues and invested in our student athletes in particular. And I just wanted to, to open it up by saying that obviously I've been involved with a lot of uh, calls either on a high level nationally within the conference. Um, it, but more importantly, I think here at TU. And so I want you to discuss or talk about some of the things and some of the conversations that you're having with your student athletes. So I'll just open it up to whoever wants to comment on that first. I'll start. Um, you know, we, we've had multiple meetings at this point uh, with, and, and obviously I'm, I'm dealing with uh, large numbers compared to everybody else. And so sometimes those calls are a little bit more difficult to do uh, to make sure that everybody can get on and all of that. But, you know, with our guys, you know, I really just wanted to give them uh, a space or a platform, if you will, to allow them to kind of talk about everything that's going on, to give them a place that they felt safe, they felt protected, and felt like they had the opportunity to say whatever they wanted to say. Um, you know, as we, as we have gone through this process together, you know, obviously we're all learning. And, and I think, uh, you know, emotions are high. Uh, there's there's lots of things going on, you know, as, as you look on Twitter, as you look on the news, uh, there's so many things that are pulling at, at right now. And so to give our guys an opportunity to kind of talk about those things, understanding that um, everybody's got different emotions about it. And, you know, obviously uh, myself, I, you know, some of the things that you may be going through, I haven't experienced, and, and I'm, I'm fully aware of it. But for us to open up that space and, and you be uh, comfortable to say everything that you're going through, experiences that you've had, things that, that we can share with our, with our team in general, and then, you know, us just really, really listening, you know, opening up our hearts, opening up our ears, and paying attention to what's going on around us and – how it affects every one of us. So we, we had our first meeting and allowed guys to really just talk. You know, I, I kind of just, you know, guys got up and said what they wanted to say, obvious through Zoom. And then, uh, you know, more than anything, our guys wanted to be heard. And then we wanted to have action. And so, you know, in our second call, we had the Players Coalition come on, <laughs> we're with now. Um, and, and some of the things that we feel like we can positively do as a football team and do together. A lot of that is involved in voting and being educated on how to vote and what the, what, what our vote really means. And so we feel like we've partnered with a group that can really not only educate us, but give us even a larger platform to be able to do things, not only just in our community and on our campus, but give us a chance to really affect things on a broader scope. Okay, uh, <clears throat> I, I, I uh, like Philip. We've had a couple of uh, Zoom meetings with our team, and um, the first meeting, uh, obviously, in those settings, uh, you know, guys uh, may not may be a little reluctant to talk. So I, I kind of went at it this way. And Dr. Gregg was you were in with our call. I, I started off by talking about some of my experiences and uh, and 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 let them know that uh, there was no right or wrong answers. Um, and we wanted to hear what they were feeling, what they were thinking, because, you know, there's a lot of unrest. Uh, you know, at that time, the first call, you were seeing a lot of uh, pain through a lot of people, a lot of anger through a lot of people and how the protests were going. So I, for my first thing was to make sure um, that they're where their minds were. And, uh, you know, we got players from all different, uh, you know, we got black, we got white, we got uh, 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 Mexican, uh, and and but I want our whole staff and our players to all speak and just really just say whatever they wanted to say, and uh, it was really good. And everybody spoke and everybody talked about what they were feeling, and 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 it's, it's amazing. After we got off the call, I felt we grew, and and I think that's what we would like to see. Uh, 
and, and when we have these difficult conversations, because when you're talking about something like race, uh, racism, uh, uh, it, those are very, very hard conversations to have. And, uh, uh, but I, I think now what we're seeing, and as tragic as George Floyd's death was, what we're seeing is that door opening for people to be more willing to voice, uh, to have a, feel like they have a voice and they, they can say it with strength. And it's not just people that look like me. It's people that don't look like me. And I think that's what makes it more profound. And I think that's where, where I feel like that needle is moving. Uh, and, it's, and it's about the generations that come after us. Uh, we know um, for 400 years uh, what has gone on. And I think, you know, since the Rodney King, uh, and that was caught on videotape, uh, there's so many of these situations uh, uh, that are not caught on videotape. And I think, uh, you know, black folks don't want sympathy. I think uh, they want justice and uh, they want equality. And I think we, we talked about all the things in terms of what our guys and, and, and get a feel for them. And it's interesting when you talk about some of the things that were going on with rioting and uh, looting and I made sure our guys understand of being safe and doing things in a positive way. And, uh, but I, one of our players made the comment, and this was very profound. He said, but why you say do that, coach? Because that hasn't changed anything. You know, when you look across the country over the years, decades of what has happened in our country, when these things happen, people have always been trying to be peaceful, but it still keeps happening. And he didn't understand why we pro profess being, uh, you know, positive and, 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 and have peaceful protests. I'll, I'll jump in. I think this, is, this has been great just listening uh, to the conversations that we've had as a staff, but and then listening to Coach Monty and Coach Hay, you know, talk about how they've met with their student athletes. Um, we've met with our, our girls online uh, about a week ago. and a little different than how I think your athletes were. They, they seem to be very quiet. Um, and I think that they were still searching um, for the words to how to express themselves. Um, and maybe in some fashion, um, not wanting to offend anybody else on the call. So I think, you know, we're still at a starting point of, of learning how to express ourselves. And so, you know, we kind of went at it, getting that feeling that the girls were going to have a tough time you know, expressing how they felt is just letting them know how we felt. And I think sometimes as coaches, if we can, if we can show that we're vulnerable, you know, then the athletes, you know, can learn to be more vulnerable. So I hope, I hope we get to some of these deeper conversations, you know, with our athletes. Um, it led me to call a lot of my players individually. And that's where some of the, the good dialogue I thought took place. Um, and really just, they, they appreciated the fact that they were being reached out to and, and knowing that they are going to be heard. And some of them searching for guidance on how to say what they wanted to say um, so it didn't get taken out of context. Um, and that when they did speak, that it, it had the value that they wanted to say. And so um, I, I just, speaking with a couple of them last night, they hope that we continue to have, you know, these conversations, which I think is great. Um, it's, you know, may put some people un in uncomfortable positions, but I think that's the point, you know, and I think that's how we're going to grow um, and be able to make an impact in where we want to go. We, we've had those uh, meetings with our team as well. We, we had the, the, the initial Zoom call and, you know, two or three of them speak out. But then as you as you look at them, as the two or three are speaking, there are others that are nodding their head. And even though they're not saying anything, they're agreeing with what's being said. And I, I think the consensus was um, just within our group, they feel safe. They feel like uh, there's, there's equality. Um, they feel that. But it's when they step outside our group that things become less safe. And now they're, um, uh, they feel more isolated. Um, so, you know, we... we they, the follow-up is they want individual attention. You know, they want to, you know, we've followed up now with just individual calls and just 
just let them talk and ask questions. I've tried to ask questions of them about, you know, how things make them feel. And um, so I, I think as a group, they're in a good place, but we've also encouraged them to not let what's happened in the, in the last two weeks be the only time they speak out. It's a, this generation has an opportunity to really create change. And this generation has to continue to speak out. They have to continue to have a voice. They have to continue to stand up for themselves. And we can't wait until there's another horrific uh, murder to, to all of a sudden now we want change. There, there has to be constant uh, work to create change. And, and I feel like I'm, I'm responsible for that. Because like Frank said, it's not about the people that look like them. It's about the people that look like me. And it's about how I stand up for equality. And it's about the, you know, what the stand I take. And so I, I've kind of taken that as, as a personal charge to, to stand up for my players and, and encourage them to stand up for themselves. And, um, you know, I think together we can, we can help them be the change. So I'll go ahead and uh, finish that off. I mean, you know, I have a very interesting team, but different in composition than uh, a lot of our teams on campus. It's, it's, you know, 38 women of which about 20 come from all over the world. Um, I was looking it up yesterday. We represent about uh, nine countries and haven't gotten together yet as a team. In fact, we're going to do that tomorrow and have a, a chat about, uh, sort of, you know, current events and, and really discussing what this means because, you know, for a woman from Hungary, the idea of, um, you know, racism is not quite the same thing. It, it exists, of course. Um, but, you know, the, the conversation that we're having right now actually surprisingly was one of, hey, coach, are you okay? Um, which surprised me actually because, you know, I was, I mean, you know, when all of this happened, like many of you, you know, I, I was pretty hurting. And, um, you know, I, I was searching for a way to involve my team because, it, you know, all of us as head coaches feel that responsibility for our, our athletes. And what we did, you know, when I talked to my assistant coaches and, you know, what I decided to do is just go ahead and put a personal statement out within our team saying, hey, look, you know, I know that this probably looks uh, very bad and that it looks um, unusual for you, especially for those of you who've just come to the United States. But understand that there's a long history here. And, you know, I, I talked a little bit about, you know, my history as an African-American male. And I was surprised at the amount of um, love, I, I think is, is appropriate to say, that came back from the team and to each other. So, um, what we're going to do this weekend is we're going to talk about a little bit about the history of American, uh, you know, basically race, right? What, what is the 13th, 14th, 15th Amendment? We're going to talk about what slavery was. We're, we're going to dive deep into that. Um, and I think the team is actually looking forward to it. But, but the basis for it is the fact that we've been having these conversations about equality on our team for a long time. Um, you know, we don't, we explicitly say that everyone is welcome on our team. And, you know, it doesn't matter what your race is, it doesn't matter what your religion is, it doesn't matter what your, you know, sexuality is. The only thing that we're limited by is the fact that you have to be female. Um, and, but we recognize the, 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 you know, array of people that are, in that category and we work really hard to be accepting of that so i think that's been really positive on our team and we're looking forward to having that conversation tomorrow